Welcome to Bellows Blades, where occasionally we review things that go bang instead of things that cut. And today is one of those days. Uh, today I just recently got in a, a new handgun that I wanted to do a review on. This is the BRG-9 Elite. Um, and so this is a handgun that I was able to pick up on sale for under $200. $189 is what I paid for this thing. And at that price, it was way too good of a deal for me to pass up. So I wanted to go ahead and pick one up, test it out, see what I thought of it, uh, and let you guys know. So the first thing I want to do is just a little bit of a tabletop initial review, taking a look at it. Uh, then we'll go ahead and take it outside, do some shooting, and see how the thing handles, if it's accurate, if it's reliable, that kind of thing. If this gun turns out to be reliable and accurate at the price point, um, I mean, you're talking a high point price, but you're getting something that I have heard is on par with the quality of the gun it was modeled after, which is the Springfield XD9. And if that is the case, then this thing was an absolute steal at $189. Uh, so I want to go ahead and take a look at it. Um, first thing, just to kind of point out before we even take it out of the box, it does come in a nice hard case. You can see here it comes with a lot of additional accessories. So you have a magazine in it. You've got another magazine here. So it does come with two 16-round magazines. It has replaceable back strap, your small, medium, and large. I believe it comes with a medium on it. You've got um, a re reloader here that helps you uh, reload the magazines a little easier than just using your thumb. Uh, some people really find those helpful. Other people have done it by hand long enough that they don't really need that, but it's a nice touch. Uh, and then just to get this whole thing into frame, we'll pull it down a little bit to show you what else you get. Uh, they actually include a little bottle of gun oil, which I've never seen before. That's kind of cool. You actually get three brushes. It looks like you've got a brass brush, I assume a nylon bristle brush, and then kind of a cotton swab type uh, or wool type um, brush here as well for cleaning it out. Uh, you also have another brush here as well. And then you have a cleaning cloth and a trigger lock. So it comes with quite a bit for that price point of $189. Uh, and again, if this thing proves to be reliable and accurate, then this is the deal of the century. I mean, when it comes to a handgun, if you can get something of quality for that price point, like, like I said, it was too, it was too good a deal for me to pass up and at least not give it a shot. I had seen a lot of really good reviews. People seemed really happy with it. So I thought I'd pick one up, put it on the channel uh, for you guys to see. And if you can find one on a good sale like that, absolutely. Then if this thing proves to be good, then it would be worth it for you to pick one up. Uh, I do know that the sale that I bought it at for the 189 is no longer going on. This thing retail, I think MSRP on it is $399. I've heard it's a good deal even for that price point. Uh, but I think you could probably still find it even, um, you know, without too much difficulty for probably around the 250 mark. Uh, and again, you could maybe wait and see if it goes on sale somewhere. If you can definitely, if you could pick it up under the 200 and this thing proves reliable, it'll be worth it. So a couple things to point out here before we really get into it. Um, I'm, again, BRG9 Elite. Uh, this is one of the handguns that is currently being made in Turkey and imported over here. There are a lot of good guns coming out of Turkey right now. Um, I actually uh, have handled a few. I, I own oh, one or two of these. And... Uh, so far, I've been impressed with the quality of what's coming out of Turkey, especially for the prices that you're able to pick them up at. Um, so that's one thing to just kind of point out. That is where it's made. It is imported through, I believe it's Buffalo Cartridge uh, a Company, I think is who brings them in. I, I believe they're located in Finley, Ohio. That's probably somewhere on the frame here, and we'll look at that here in a minute when I get it out. So the first thing I want to do, though, is, of course, make sure that this thing is safe. Uh, so anytime you're dealing with a handgun, you want to take proper safety precautions. So I'm going to drop the mag, which that came out really nice, uh, show you that there's no ammo in the magazine. And then we're going to rack this thing back, and we're going to just take a look there, check there's nothing in the chamber or in the barrel. And again, I don't know that I can get the lighting right to show you that, but you saw me finger check it. I can see in it very clearly that there's nothing in there. Uh, so I can go ahead and drop that slide. Now, one of the things I noticed right away, similar to a lot of the Springfields, it does have a uh, striker indicator showing that this is in the cocked and ready to fire position. Those are always nice to have that just visually you can immediately see, yes, this thing is ready to fire. Of course, you can also see that it's empty because it has a... Uh, loaded chamber indicator here as well. Again, looks like it's modeled right off the Springfield. If there is a round in this gun, that would be popped up a little bit at an incline and you'd be able to see it wouldn't be flush. So you'd know that you have a round in the chamber. Um, so this thing, 
right away does definitely kind of remind you of a Springfield. There's no doubt about that. And I've had good luck with Springfields. I've really enjoyed those. So, you know, if this thing does a decent job of mimicking that, then I'll be pretty happy. Uh, so you can see there, like I said, the gun is safe. Uh, you do get two 16 round magazines. So you can see that there, that that is a 16 round magazine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that back in there for now. And I would assume that taking this thing apart is probably the same as a Springfield as well, which we'll do that here in just a minute. Um, I'm going to move this case out of the way just because I uh, don't really need it at this point. Uh, you can see there, you know, of course, it comes with the different back straps. You have three different back straps there. Uh, so I'm probably going to leave the one that's on it. I believe that's the medium. I don't know if it indicates it anywhere, maybe on the inside, probably. Um, but we'll see how it shoots just with the one that comes on it. Uh, as far as the trigger and everything goes, I'm going to actually drop, drop the magazine because I want to check trigger reset and all that just on camera to show you guys what that looks like. So this thing should be ready to fire. It does have the grip safety. Now, I do know a lot of people don't like those grip, grip safeties, but honestly, every gun that I have them on, I've never had a gun fail to go off when I wanted it to. So the grip safety doesn't really bother me. In fact, in a concealed carry gun, I actually prefer it because it's just that extra level of safety without having the manual safety. I prefer not to have the manual safety that I got to remember to turn on and off um, or flick it up or down. But having the grip safety is one that just naturally you disengage when you when you properly grip the gun. And I do, I do kind of like that. So that's my personal preference. Some people don't like them, and I understand that. Um, I will note also that it looks like it does have an ambidextrous mag release. So that's nice for those lefties out there that you know that you can release that from either side. The trigger itself has the safety blade in it as well. It does look kind of like a flat trigger, not so much curved, just a little bit of curve, but mostly flat. So we're going to just see what that trigger pull looks like. So there's a little bit of take up there. And now right there, I believe I've hit the wall, sure enough. And there, there it goes off. So let's see what that reset looks like. Okay, so that's that's a really pretty long reset. Now, striker-fired uh, polymer guns don't usually have the best triggers on them. So I don't know that that's going to bother me. I'm kind of used to, to having a trigger like that that's a little, little spongy and kind of has a little bit longer uh, reset. But the, really, the pull on it's actually pretty good. I don't see any issues with the pull, but the reset, you got to come out pretty far before that. I mean, you're, you're most of the way, you know, forward before that thing resets. So, I mean, again, you're looking at, I paid 189 for this gun. That trigger is definitely, definitely better than the price point on the gun, just from feel there. And of course, we'll have to get it out and shoot it and see, see how it does with live fire. Uh, but right there, I do, I do think that that feels like a decent trigger. Uh, as far as dropping the slide off of this thing and uh, kind of field stripping it, again, I've not done it, but I'm assuming it's going to be the same as a Springfield. So we're going to go ahead and rack this back. I'm going to lock it. And then this is either going to rotate. It looks like it's probably going to rotate down. Yep. And then my guess is you got to drop this. And it does look like it's one where you have to pull the trigger. And then there you go. You've now taken, taken this thing apart. You can see here that you do have kind of the dual spring there on the recoil rod. And then you've got the barrel here as well. This is a supposedly, uh, this barrel is 4340 forged steel barrel. Uh, so, you know, supposed to be a pretty decent barrel as far as that goes. Go ahead and put that all back together. If you've ever opened up a striker fired um gun then there's really nothing that looks unusual here actually one thing though i do notice here is these rails are quite a bit longer than a most striker fired guns so a lot of times you're looking at about maybe a little more than half uh two two thirds maybe of that length so having that longer rail might actually help a little bit with the recoil on this gun uh, so we'll have to see once we get it out there and start shooting it but i do i do think that that's kind of a nice touch and i'm going to go ahead and lock that back rotate this drop it and we should be good to go again so easy enough to tear down no problems there whatsoever if you're familiar with how spring fields work you're going to know how to field strip this thing without any issues so as far as this thing goes again it's got a 4340 forged barrel it's four inch long barrel uh, so it is a somewhat small it's not a five inch right so four inches is kind of that medium length barrel uh, plenty good enough for decent accuracy, um, 
But again, I don't think this is a concealed carry gun anyway, just because of the size of it, even the height of it, top to bottom. You're not going to really conceal this thing. It's not meant to be a compact. It's closer to a full size. It's 7.36 inch, uh, inches overall, and it's got a height of 5.5 .5 inches. The width on the handle, on the grip here, is supposed to be 1.4 inches. And when it's completely empty, it's uh, got a weight of 30 ounces. So that is you know, all pretty standard, I think, for the size gun that this is. Uh, it supposedly has a five pound trigger pull. And I think just from pulling it there, kind of dry fire, that probably feels about right. Uh, it might be five and a half, uh, you know, it might be five. It's, it's somewhere within that four and a half to five and a half pound trigger pull, which is pretty standard for the striker fire pistols. Uh, so nothing out of the ordinary there. So as far as it goes, just looking at this thing as far as kind of fit, finish, and all that, I don't really see any issues with the uh, with with the milling or anything like that. I don't see any rough edges or burrs. I will say here that it does caution you that this will fire without a magazine, so that's good to know that this thing, uh, it's good to be aware of when you're handling it that it will fire even if there's not a magazine in it, which actually I kind of prefer myself anyway. You can see the Made in Turkey, BRG, um, Berg, Bergu Metal. I'm reading upside down, but I think that's what that stands for. And then, yes, there it is, Buffalo Cartridge Company, Finley, Ohio. So you can see there that that is where that comes from. So overall, guys, uh, I, I mean, I'm pretty impressed just with the tabletop, right? Just pulling this thing out of the, out of the case, comes in a nice hard case, has all the extra accessories, um, you know, the only thing I could say that would have been a little nicer is maybe having a third magazine, but you know, at $189, uh, I, I don't know that that's even reasonable to expect. I'm pretty impressed with what it actually comes with. So I got to say, I'm excited to get this thing out and shoot it. I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down, uh, put a little bit of oil where it needs to be, make sure there's not any extra grease on this thing. And then we're going to take it out and fire it and let you guys know what I think. All right, guys, we're back from uh, taking this thing out to the to the range, doing a little bit of shooting here. Um, it's the BRG9 Elite. So I just want to kind of quickly go over some comments on that. First thing I want to mention that I did not mention in the first half of the video before I get into how it did on shooting, um, I did not mention the sights or the sight picture. So this thing does have just two white dots in the back, and then it has a colored dot in the front. Again, being colorblind, I can't tell you for sure. That's either a yellow or an orange, I believe. Uh, but it does have the colored dot in the front. I didn't find that to be difficult to use. Um, worked out just fine for me. 
Um, but as far as the gun itself and the performance, first of all, we're just gonna go ahead and drop the mag out of it, show you that that's empty, lock it back, check the chamber, we're good to go, this thing's clear. So as far as the shooting goes, um, the gun itself shot fine. I didn't shoot the best with it. Uh, some of that has to do with the fact that I have recently done a lot of shooting with uh, micro nines, and so it's entirely different, the grip. I do have fairly shaky hands, uh, so getting adjusted to a new gun and how I have to grip that gun takes me a little bit of shooting with it to get comfortable with it. I mean, I think I felt like for me and knowing my skill set, I did I did well for my first time shooting the gun. Uh, the group was tight enough uh, overall that it would have been sufficient for what I needed it to do. The targets I'm shooting at are smaller paper targets. They're not they're not full size, you know, large torso targets. And then when I did shoot the steel, um, the grouping on that, even when I did the rapid fire, was it was fairly decent. It was acceptable for a new gun that I hadn't shot. That was the first 50 rounds I shot out of the gun. Now, the one thing I will mention, like I said, basically I feel like the gun is as accurate as the shooter. Uh, so anything you were seeing there that didn't look that great, that was on me as the shooter. Um, the one thing I will mention that was kind of funny because of course I didn't get it on camera, right after I turned off the cameras and I was getting ready to tear everything down, I reached in my pocket and I realized I had one round left. So I thought, well, I wanna see how accurate the gun is. And so I decided to take my time, check my breathing, you know, make sure I squeeze the trigger properly and I wasn't anticipating recoil and all that and see if I could hit a headshot because uh, the head on the target was the one thing I hadn't shot at. And so sure enough, taking my time, I was able to go ahead and shoot one, one last round and got real close to a bullseye on that. So that tells me right there, and I know it was off camera, I wish it had been on camera and I'd left the, the tape rolling, uh, but that does tell me though that the gun itself is accurate. That's, you know, that's, and... If I slow down and really take my time, I can make that accurate shot with a gun. So uh, a lot of times people like to try and blame the gun. Very rarely is it ever the gun. It's almost always the shooter. And I, I take full responsibility for that as far as uh, what that looked like. So um, yeah, the gun itself, happy with it, guys. Uh, of course, I only shot 50 rounds through it. So this thing is definitely reliable. Uh, based on that 50 rounds, but of course you can't really talk about reliability until you've shot a whole lot more through it. Uh, also the gun tends to, any gun tends to kind of settle in and smooth out uh, the more you shoot it. So as I put more rounds through this thing, it may even be a nicer shooter than it was. That being said, I felt it was a very comfortable gun to shoot. Um, recoil was very manageable. When I was shooting faster on the steel, I was able to get back on target no problem very quickly. Um, recoil did not feel bad at all. And of course that makes sense with it being a full size, you know, you've got the somewhat longer barrel at four inches, the longer slide, the longer slide rails in here. Um, that didn't surprise me that the recoil was manageable. Uh, the only other thing I think I didn't mention up front when we were talking about this thing before we took it out is the magazines. It does come with two magazines. You can order them directly through BRG. And I think they run like 30, 35, something like that. Uh, but the nice thing is XD9, the Springfield XD9 mags are supposed to be compatible. Now I have some on order, I haven't got them in yet, so I'll have to let you know whether those work. But as far as I know, and everything I've seen online tells me that those sh uh, should work with this gun. So um, guys, overall, closing thoughts. I think this thing is a killer deal at um, what I paid for it, the 189. So for 189 and everything you get with it, this is a great, great handgun for that price point. Uh, it feels well built, seems reliable. The only con that I ran into that I just want to make sure that I mentioned because other people might have the same issue and you may notice it is that when I was shooting, I was never able to get it to lock back on the last round. And that was on me because this slide release lever here is so large and sticks out so much. And I tend to try to grab real high up on a gun to get good control and accuracy. So when I do that, it was almost impossible for my thumb not to at least touch that thing. And this thing is very sensitive with how much it sticks out, that if you just put pressure against it at all, no matter which direction, then it's going to keep it from locking back. And some people really, really don't like it when they can't get a gun to lock back. And that makes sense. There's a reason for that. And that is, if I'm, sh if I'm actually in a self-defense situation and I'm shooting and I run out of ammo, this thing locks back on the last round. I can drop the magazine, slap a new one in, and I'm ready to go, right? Because I'm able to just drop that slide on the on the magazine 
loading around and, and you're ready to be back in the fight. Now, if it doesn't do that, if I hit my last my last round and nothing happens because it didn't lock back and I'm like, okay, I'm out. I've now dropped the mag. I have to put a new one in and now I've got to rack the slide in order to be ready to get back in the fight. So you're losing some time there. For one, you're pulling a trigger on an empty uh, on an empty barrel or chamber and before you realize you're out. You got to drop drop the mag, put a new one in, and now you've got a racket. So I can understand why some people that's a really big deal for. And if this was my carry gun, I would agree. However, this is not going to be my carry gun. And so since I'm not going to be using it more than likely in a self-defense situation, it doesn't really bother me that much. But just be aware that that thing really sticks out and it's really easy to either ride your thumb on it or even just kind of bump into it as you're shooting. And if you do that, this thing's not going to lock open when it hits that last round. So that's really the only negative that I see to it. And again, that's me in my case, learning to readjust my grip so that I'm not touching it if it really bothers me enough to do that. Uh, and it's not really a fault of the gun. So all that being said, good trigger, good recoil management, uh, reliable at least through the first 50 rounds, even with cheap uh, target ammo that I bought at Walmart years ago. Um, you know, I'm happy with it guys, $189, you can't beat it.